That's right, Samurai Friggin' Jack. Right off the bat, I'ma say this show is a bop. One of the best cartoons ever made, if you ask me. Many will be inclined to agree. I think that this was by the same guy who made Dexter. No, the other one. And before he was chained by Sodi, and not making that Popeye movie. This was one of his babies. Along with Clone Wars and this. This show's a huge love letter to the things Gendy Pop Tartakovsky loved. By watching the show, you can see many inspirations behind many characters and the ideas present throughout. You see stuff from like Conan, The Barbarian, 300, Ronin, Old Samurai Flix. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Astounding. Something for probably everyone. The show follows its titular character, Jack. A lone samurai flung into the future, trying to stop evil incarnate, known only as Aku. The entire show follows his many journeys across multiple places, meeting and often helping multiple people, creatures, fighting Aku's mercs sent his way. Very episode by episode, so there won't be any confusion if you watch them in any random order. Except for the multiple partners, but those are the exceptions. That and a couple callbacks here and there, but those are all so very rare. Despite that, I still recommend watching majority of the episodes just for visuals alone. A lot of really nice looking shots that the show could pull off. Even for the time, it makes you wonder, this was for television? Hell, some of the best parts are the more silent and serene scenes. Something I've normally hated for being honest. The lighting, shadows, and colors, how it's all drawn is something to behold. Just for that alone, it's a must look. Don't let that detract you from some of the stories it tells. There's a lot of real bangers, and then there's... these kinds. Unfortunately, when the show hits filler, it's easily recognizable and mostly boring. So the way I want to take this, in comparison to the other two reviews I've done, is going season by season. Seeing how the series evolved from start to conclusion. Let's not screw around here any longer. History lesson's over, fools. Gotta get back. Back to the past. Season 1 starts rough, and I mean that in the best way possible. The first three part episode, it goes in hard, doesn't fuck around. Hands down, one of my favorite episodes of anything, really, for all it does. That and the Blind Archers one. Some of the animation looks strange, but I feel it often works considering the designs are basic shapes, and this was from 2001. But even in HD, it barely shows his age, which I do admire. Jack is a man who follows the Bushido Code to a T, upholding many virtues in his one quest to destroy Aku. Though he is known to be a bit angry at times. Do you blame him though? The man lost all his family and friends in the past. Though because of this, he may act too brash at points, leading to a mistake on his part. Hell, it's even the premise for a whole episode, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Even with this, he still upholds justice, not just himself, but for others that mean no harm. Just living basic lives as drones to Aku. Unless they're an actual drone, then you can die. Go home, clankers. Jack doesn't have many people he can call an ally, except one. That being the Scotsman. What do you think of that, Mr. Pajama Wedding? Basket face, slipper wielding, clipe, three buckled, gather up and play more bleeder and gominal, Jesse off looking stoner, near fluky sand milk drinking, space show pit moved, sniveling worm eyed hood and walk. He's a hulking man compared to Jackie Boy, boasting standard Scottish garb and a machine gun for a leg. Not to mention he's very crude and brash and speaks English, spitty voice. 
can give him a spotlight here since he's one of the only recurring characters. He's a great comedic foil to Jack's stoic nature. He's a friggin' riot. With what he's given and the delivery from John DiMaggio, it makes him probably my second favorite character if Aku didn't exist. Speaking of which, Aku himself gets set up as a great villain off the bat too. He's an intimidating dictator, but also with a bit of a catty bitch attitude go about him, often taunting Jack or others, referring to them as FOOLS. The actor Mako, God rest his soul, does a real bang up job with his role and only gets better as the series goes on. The way they develop such a harsh but also funny villain this early in the game is real neat. But the heroes within are legendary. Little Red Riding Hood. Even if for now he mostly sends grunts to do his work. I love Aku and I love what they have planned for him. For you see, little samurai, the world is mine. My eyes and ears are everywhere. Nothing you do will go unseen. Quest as you. But we will meet again when I see fit, in a time and place of my choosing. And it is I who shall put an end to the war started in that age-long past. Samurai Jack! <laughs> As for the episodes themselves, their basic start to what the series would evolve into and sets up what Jack and the world around him are all about. One episode he'll help with the slavery creatures, he'll help a village get home, then he'll be battling his own shadow the next. As well as a couple episodes regarding Jack's own way home, only for him not to take it for some reason or another. Be it that he gets halted or he chooses to stay or some other virtuous crap he upholds. Action here is a real highlight, having a mix of pure slashing and wit to defeat the current foe. Honestly, I admire it compared to what I've seen before and since. Of just hit thing real hard, then it die. That or something gets utterly decimated. Holy shit, calm down, bro. It's enough, they're already dead. For first season, it's a pretty good start, which is more than what I could say for some shows. On such a simple premise like this, it's sort of action or monster of the week type thing. It could be better, but it could have been a whole lot worse. Well, I will find a way back to my own time. There, I will finish what I started centuries ago and defeat Aku's evil before it was ever truly unleashed. Watch season 2 is what I call the development season. It follows the idea of it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's much more world building going on as we see more of the different people around the Jack will come across, of varying races, species, and all that. A lot more focus on bounty hunter centric stuff. There's a lot here. There's so many people after his head. From the Dome of Doom's warriors, these super robots that just murder a bunch of people, the Imakandi, and this guy. What is thy bidding, my master? It's nice to see the development of everything, including Jack himself. He learns a couple new skills, started to see how things work in the future. Which really shows a bunch of growth, as from what we got in Season 1. Then we get a whole episode on some of his background as a child, which is one of my favorites in the whole season, if you ask me. Unfortunately, not much in the Aku department, aside from a few exchanges and interactions with his grunts. That's okay, since what we do get is gold. You have failed me, Demongo. 
No, master. Please forgive me. No. Oh, but what's this? We get a returning character this season. And who else could it be but the Scotsman? I'm back, ya goldrick tatis! Yeah, we get another episode about him, and it's honestly one of the better ones, if you ask me. He needs to rescue his wife this time. Engaging in everyone's least favorite part of any game, a stealth mission. Here we not only see his wife, but more of his camaraderie with Jack. And even the clan he resides in, full of other big Scottish men like him. Other than that, I think this is my favorite season overall. I love just about every episode here, except the one infamous example. <sighs> yes, the sandals one. While I personally love how the episode ends and should have think it end right here, I personally think it's a waste of time since it does nothing besides, look, weird shoes that don't work on him, that's funny. But I personally can't stand it. I'm sure it has its fans, though. It's just not for me. Back on track. Maybe it's because this one spawns the most memes, for I am a simple shit poster too. It also has houses what I feel some of the greatest moments. Like Jack fighting along with the Spartans, him finding his home destroyed. This joke. At the fork in the road, follow the rocky path. It will take you to the dragon's lair. Where will the other one take me? Space Ace! It just has so much, it made me excited to move on to Season 3. Samurai Jack at its peak, in my opinion. You can fly? No. Jump good. Watch out. If Season 2 is the development season, then Season 3 is what I call the experimental season. It tries a lot, but it's more of a mixed bag. We're starting out... <sighs> it's the chicken episode. What I consider <laughs> the worst episode of the entire series. He's just a fucking chicken! It's not even cool! Ah, you're back! What'll it be? The chicken, right? No! No chicken! <clears throat> I mean, no thank you. Actually, I would like to try the shrimp today instead. Luckily, more of the other episodes are pretty decent at best, and boring at worst, which is kind of a shame. We don't get much development of the world either, just more of the same stuff. With a bit of a focus on finding ways home. There's like three of them, which is a bit insane on the surface, but it shows how desperate Jack is to get home at this point. And one of them is Jigen for some reason. I don't mind. Jigen's cool. To be honest, I don't have much to say about this season as compared to the others, as a lot of it's so bare bones that it's not even worth talking about. But we do get one of the most important episodes in the entire series. The Birth of Evil. This shows Aku's origin, the origin of the sword, and the UNSPEAKABLE EVIL he unleashed so long ago. It's such a brutal and beautiful piece, it's clearly one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. That and the Haunted House one, those are pretty great. Honestly, this season was kind of a bummer for me. I would probably say it's the weakest in the entire series, just mostly unappealing. Watch these episodes and you'll be okay. You can skip the others. Who gives a damn? At least this one gives us the rave. Rave is so sick and saves the early season, honestly. So many colors, so vibrant, and the music's a freaking bop. You've been listening to it for at least this bit. I just hope season four pans out better than this at the very least. 
Only one way to find out. <laughs> Season four is interesting. There's no real way to categorize it. It's definitely a step up from season three off the bat, I can tell you that. It's such a fun and creative episode with the lighting and the colors. Just what it does is absolutely beautiful. For the most part, it keeps up the pace the rest of the season. There's only a couple real snores, but other than those, I enjoyed this. Most of it seems to focus on telling a story as opposed to just being Jack hunted down by bounty hunters or helping some random people he comes across, and that's just it. Develop some more characters around, we even get a couple where Aku's the main focus. <laughs> no, I will not fight you today. <laughs> oh, I don't feel good. And then there's this guy. This has to be my new favorite character this it's season alone. He just oozes charm with his massive ego. It's great to see Jack put this son of a bitch into his place. David Allen Greer really brings it for his performance as this character of the Samurai. <laughs> I love him. But that's not all that comes around. Someone special comes back to grace us. Can you not see I'm trying to get a tank? It's the Scotsman, dude! After no episode last season, he stars in this season's two-parter. It's great! I miss the motherfucker. Here, Jack lost his memory, and now the two have to get it back from some weirdly sexy sirens that I'm sure DeviantArt had a real good time with. I like how it emphasizes more of the Scotsman's personality with just random people besides the ones that he meets, like Jack or just his family. He even shows his capabilities as a warrior without being outshined. It's definitely a really good two-parter, if you ask me. One of the best ones this season. I was really surprised this season. I didn't expect to like this one as much as I did. There's all sorts of crazy plots and things that it does, and it doesn't feel as weird as it did before in season three. There's a giant robot, a coup gets a cold, which is honestly hilarious. How the hell does evil get a cold? There's actually an Aku fight with one-on-one. -on -one. A villain meetup plot, one of my favorite sort of plot ideas. There's a film noir, and I even like the episode with the baby. And those I normally dislike. And other people hate this episode. It's not just because it tells the story of Mama Taro, even though I love that story. But it's pretty neat seeing Jack interact with children. You don't really see that at all, actually. He normally just comes across a child and then just pushes him on his way, but this is a full episode about it. And if the season's lowest duds, for me at least, are a Star Wars homage and a flashback, then he did something right here. Definitely the upgrade the series needed. And thus, ended the original run. After this, we had to wait another 13 years till the conclusion of Jack's story. It definitely took Gendy a long time. But was it worth it? Well, time to find out. I'll be back again, Samurai! You'll see! <laughs> Watch out! We're here, the end of our journey, ours and Jack's. Time must say, it's pretty goddamn awesome. Right off the bat, not only shows you how Jack changed as a combatant, how Gendy and his team have changed in the animation field. This looks absolutely beautiful, and it's in full screen this time. Yeah, the others weren't just shrunk down. 
or anything. Gotta preserve that 4 by 3 aspect ratios. Anyway, this time... Actually, I'll let Jack explain it. Fifteen years have passed. But... I do not age. Time has lost its effect on me. Yet, the suffering continues. Aku's grasp chokes the past, present, and future. Hope is lost. Gotta get back. Back to the past. Samurai Jack. This season's more linear, and that's okay. First half deals with the sisters of Aku and Jack's attempt to recover a sword, basically re-establishing a lot of these characters while creating the new ones along the way. Jacko has lost his sword, though, and since 50 years has passed, it's now haunted by the spirits of the people, which he couldn't return to save. Dealing with the guilt and self-resentment he has since being sent to the future, it's incorporated by his angry side, and the lone samurai that will lead him to his destiny of the death he feels he deserves. Aku is also back, not voiced by the late Mako, but this time by Greg Baldwin. He does a good job and has some real good comedic lines. The character loses much seriousness, which makes sense for his character. Aku's freaking depressed. Again, how does that happen? After a while, he just really doesn't care. He wants to live his life mostly. And yeah, it works. It's kind of hard to explain, but I like it for the most part. Then there's the Sisters of Aku. Basically, soldiers trained from birth with one goal in mind. TO KILL THE SAMURAI! <laughs> They're capable warriors. They're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jack easily. So much to outdo him. Similar to the Imakandi in Season 2. But when Jack gets the upper hand, the blood starts. Jack has never killed a person up to this point, and now he doesn't know how the hell to deal with it which is a great conflict for the character this late in the game. It's a great little arc, but only one of the sisters live, that being Ashi, often considered a weak link amongst her sisters. After some time passes, in one of my favorite episodes, Ashi's on the search for Jack, who's mysteriously gone missing. Along the way, she meets many of the companions Jack has saved and befriended along the way. Even... I have returned! Yeah. You're supposed to be dead! It's a great capper for the first half. The second half... Sorta of teeters off a little bit. It's not bad, it's just strange for the objective to objective style format, again, considering the first half. That's just all my opinion, though. And then as soon as he gets his sword, it's basically over. Last two episodes are an epic battle with Aku. With all hope lost, all the warriors come. And they see Jack about to get executed on the TV. We even get some insane callbacks here. Like those weird fish that sound like Ringo, the jump good guys, those archers that have a whole clan, the woolies, Sir Bartholomew Rothschild, the stone samurai, and my boy, the Scotsman, who's now a ghost thanks to Celtic magic. Uh, it's all great. Then Ashi can just do time stuff since she has Aku's powers, which, okay. I mean, yeah, it makes sense, and then it's just all over.
Season 5 was sort of strange. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but I don't... Even now, I don't know how to feel about it. But despite my gripes stated throughout, Season 5 is still good, I feel. I just wish it had a couple more episodes to flesh a few things out. But I'm satisfied with the ending we got, and how we got there to begin with. Samurai Jack is a true masterpiece of American animation, in my opinion. Even with a few duds here and there, I still love the show as a whole. It's really worth buying the Blu-ray box, watching it all, just in one go for this entire review. Hell, I'd do it again if I want to, with a lot of extra time. In the end, I gotta give props to Gendy, everyone who worked on the show throughout the years. He made something beautiful at the time. And even now, it still stands. Thank you. All of you. Um, I don't know what much to say. Uh, no gimmicks, no nothing. Uh, just my voice while the credits scroll. Um, I do appreciate anyone who watches these videos, or at least the long review-like ones. Even if you watch a few of the, uh, game playthroughs, it was, uh, it's really appreciated. This was definitely my longest video to date, and I'm excited to make the next one. Uh, please like and share and all that other good stuff, and I don't have much time. Goodbye.